All right, everybody. Um, so in this video, I wanted to pick up where we left off, uh, talking through the idea behind the definition of a limit, right? So as a reminder, uh, when we talk about a limit of a function, so the limit as x goes to p of f of x equals l, what we mean by that technically is the following sort of challenging definition in which for all epsilon, there exists a delta such that if we take an x value that is in the domain d and within the deleted, uh, oops, I see a typo in the deleted delta neighborhood of p, then f of x will be within the deleted epsilon neighborhood of l. And so what this definition means or how we can interpret it is as follows. We're saying for every epsilon, there exists a delta. So we're saying if we take an epsilon, right? If we take an epsilon that's bigger than zero, uh, we can think about the epsilon neighborhood around L, right? And because L is a you know sort of point in our codomain, I'm thinking of this epsilon neighborhood as being along the y axis. Right, so up here we have the point L plus epsilon. Down here we have the point L minus epsilon. Uh, and so what we're saying then is that for every epsilon, there exists some delta. And delta will be a distance along our x-axis around P. So the idea here is that there will be some sort of delta neighborhood around P. And for the x values in that delta neighborhood, they will get mapped up here to within these epsilon, uh, within this epsilon range of L. Uh, so let's see if we can if we can see this a little more naturally. So I'm going to draw some dotted lines here. All right, and those dotted lines, uh, you know, sort of hit the function at this value down here and at this value here. Uh, so notice for any x value within this range, any x value is getting mapped to a height that is within this range, right? So all of these x values, when we plug them into the function, they're being mapped to within this range right here. Um, and so what I can do then is I can choose a delta value and create a delta neighborhood. And I'm going to let my delta color be purple, because why not? So if I say maybe this distance right here is my delta distance, and so my deleted delta neighborhood becomes this range, right? So it's jumping over the point P, but it goes from P minus delta up to p plus delta, again, skipping the point p itself. So it's a deleted delta neighborhood. So this deleted delta neighborhood, we're saying that uh, if we have, or if we consider x values in the domain and within this deleted delta neighborhood, then those will map to points that are within our epsilon neighborhood in height. In other words, all of the points in this delta neighborhood are guaranteed to be within uh, this epsilon neighborhood here. And so in order for the limit to exist, we must be able to do this for every epsilon. So let's take a look at basically the same picture. I'm pausing the video here to reset my picture. All right, and we're back. So we have the same setup as before, um, but suppose we uh, and, and what we were just saying is that this uh, framework should work for any epsilon, right? So if I chose a smaller epsilon, here's sort of our remnant from our old epsilon. But if I chose a smaller epsilon, so if I made it even tinier, right? Well, we should be able to do the same thing. So my dotted line. Right, this isn't quite the best I can do with the given technology. Okay, great. So if I make my dotted line out to there, 
notice that every point within a delta distance or within, a, I should say within this distance, any point in there is going to get mapped to points on our function that are within this new epsilon distance of L. So here's our new L plus epsilon. There's our new L minus epsilon. Uh, and what we're saying is that all of the points in this range get mapped to function values that are within this range. So if I, uh, this allows me to choose a new delta, right? Maybe say delta is this distance. So we have a little delta neighborhood here, uh, deleted delta neighborhood. So we don't include the point P, but we go all the way down to P minus delta and all the way up to P plus delta, right? And then anything in this range, anything in this range here, uh, excluding the point P because of the deleted neighborhood, will definitely get mapped up to something that is within this epsilon neighborhood. And we can play the same game for every epsilon. Um, now it's important, I should say, it's important that the neighborhood be deleted and that we don't include the point P itself. That is because we want to allow for the possibility of holes in our function, right? So it's totally possible that our function might actually have a hole at P, or it might have one of those removable discontinuities. So it might have the actual function value at P defined to be, let's say, way up there, um, outside of the epsilon neighborhood. But that's okay. The limit would still be defined to be here at this point L because it would satisfy the given definition. So that is the idea behind this definition and sort of the associated picture that we might have in our head. Um, no matter how tight we make this epsilon neighborhood, no matter how small we make epsilon, we should still be able to find an appropriate deleted delta neighborhood around P that maps entirely to the interior of that epsilon neighborhood.